everything we see in the universe, the stars, the planets, the galaxies, the plants, the rocks, the clouds, us, everything you say, to me at the front of this book, is, is what you call the product of a remarkable asymmetry of uh, matter over antimatter. What did you mean by that? So, uh, profound asymmetry. So, uh, you just went right into the, the stuff I, there. Yeah, well. Okay. Uh, just a quick note. Yeah. That this title, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, uh, I've had people joke with me about it, say, oh, was Astrophysics for Dummies already taken? You know? <laughs> and I just wanted to make it clear that first, yes, it was taken. But, <laughs> but that's... <laughs> but uh, there's nothing... I, I don't think there's anything, quote, dumbed down about the astrophysics in this book. It's all sort of curated, legitimate, full-up astrophysics in an attempt to sort of grant the reader a degree of, of fluency in modern astrophysics. So like the next morning at the water cooler, you could just be talking about Yeah, and, and like there are things in here that I had never heard of. Really? And you, yeah. you, and you get around. I get around. Yeah, you get around. <laughs> so I'm going to be checking. <laughs> but, so, uh, in the, uh, in the early universe, the temperature was very hot. And above certain thresholds of temperature, what happens is matter no longer stays as matter. It can freely move back and forth between itself and energy. And we have the recipe for this. It comes from E equals MC squared. We all know that equation. It's the formal conversion recipe for matter and energy. And the c squared is the speed of light squared. It's a huge number. A little bit of mass times that huge number gives you a lot of energy. We don't experience in our lives e equals mc squared because the energy in which we're immersed is not high enough to enable matter to go back and forth between energy and itself. That's why it took so long to discover e equals mc squared and to come to terms and to come to understand it. But it is a profound equation that manifests from the beginning of time all the way to the future of the universe, but not in our life experience. All right, so, and also let me preface it by saying, uh, in one of the opening pages of the book, it's... Yes, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to you. Yeah, that's it. Signed by you. That's what I to make that clear. <laughs> so, the universe is under no obligation to make sense to any of us. So, I'll be saying things and you'll say, that doesn't make sense. Just remember what I just said, okay? Okay. What we've learned is that the universe is what we measure it to be, not what we want it to be, not what feels good, not what only has to make sense to our five senses. Our five biological senses forged in the plains of Africa, you know, a million years ago, uh, uh, half a million years, whatever, whatever what's the latest the biologists tell us, is those senses to prevent us from getting eaten by a lion are very different from what you need to grasp the universe. And so this is why mathematics is so potent, because it takes us out of our senses and enables us to still probe the reality of what the universe is. So here's what goes on. If matter and energy can go back and forth, this is how that works. I have a blob of energy and it decides that it wants to become matter, and it does. So all this energy becomes matter. What do you mean it decides? It goes, and then it thinks, what should I like to be today? Or? It happens spontaneously, oh. and it depends on what the temperature is. Ah, cool. Okay. cool. What's that? It get, it's hot, and then it gets yeah, cold. Yeah, so if, it, if the temperature drops too low, yeah. then it's not gonna happen. The energy will stay energy, and whatever matter was around at that time will stay matter. So watch what happens. We now have high enough energy that if you converted a, this pocket of energy into mass, E equals mc squared, you get enough mass to create particles out of it, okay? Mm -hmm. So get a very low, take a, an electron, for example. That's very low mass among atomic, subatomic particles. So you can ask, how much energy does it take to make an electron? Write that number down. If you don't have that much energy around you, your energy will never become a particle, hmm. ever. Okay, hmm. so 
in the early universe, there was so much energy, every particle could be made. So watch what happens. You have a pocket of energy. It becomes mass. And the only way we know that can happen is if, if it becomes a particle and an antiparticle pair. Matter and antimatter. Antimatter is the opposite of the first thing? Yes. Oh. In every measurable way. Huh. Okay, so the opposite of an electron is a positron. It looks just like an electron, but among other things, it has the opposite charge of an electron, positron. Okay? Every particle has an antiparticle. Does a neutron have an anti-neutron? Yes. Does a proton have an anti-proton? Yes. Hmm. And so you might say, well, what's the opposite charge of a neutron? Because the neutron has no charge. Yeah, I know. But you look at what the, the neutron is made of. It's made of quarks that have fractional charges that cancel each other to get zero net charge on the neutron. So an anti-neutron has all those same quarks, but the antimatter version of those quarks on the inside. What will happen if these two kiss? <laughs> if you take matter and antimatter and put them together, they annihilate and become pure energy and the matter disappears entirely. What do you mean disappear? Does it leave something over? No, no. You what, take not even like a little boing, not a, a light, a photon, uh, something? Yes, yes, so you take the particles, matter, antimatter, identical particles, other than, except that they're ma matter, antimatter, bring them together, they disappear, and that matter becomes energy and all that's left is energy, right in that pocket right huh. there. That happens all the time in the center of the sun. It happened everywhere in the early universe. Now here's the rub. You have all these photons of light. Oh, by the way, I have a photon joke. Can I tell it? Tell the photon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> a photon checks into a hotel. Not a bar. A hotel. Not a bar. No, okay. this has to be It can't a hotel. be racy because a fam this is a family. I got this. Okay. I got, I, we, I got this. <laughs> photon checks into a hotel. The bellhop hat comes up and says, uh, uh, do you have any luggage? And the photon says, no, I'm traveling light. And if the bellhop were here tonight, he'd laugh a big fat laugh. Yes, he'd yes, get it. indeed. Okay. So when I say pocket of energy, let's just simply refer to photons, because they carry energy. All right, so a photon turns into matter. It's a matter-antimatter pair. Matter-antimatter come together. They make a photon. It's symmetric. OK? OK. So. Wait a second. Does that mean that if every matter part met every antimatter part, they all would go and you'd be left with just light? Yes. There would be no matter in the universe. Only light. Oh. Okay, so now. As in let there be light. Yes. <laughs> Except there's nothing else after that. <laughs> so sort of a very short story. Let there be light and we're done. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I would take that right out of Genesis and start over. Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be a very short Genesis yes, right yeah. there. Um, so, so you have all this energy in the form of <laughs> photons becoming matter and back and forth, and there it goes. As the temperature of the universe dropped, you reach a point where you can no longer make particles with the energy you have. But you have all these matter and antimatter particle pairs that eventually find one another and annihilate and make a photon. But we're still cooling the universe. So according to our known laws of physics, in the cooling universe, every matter and antimatter particle pair would have annihilated, made a photon. The photon would have cooled, and no more matter would have been made, and we would have had an entire universe of just light. But that is not the universe we occupy. <laughs> we can start a, like a band here. No, no, no. I just, <laughs> I'm saying we apparently are the exception. Yes. yes. So, mysteriously, we call it symmetry breaking, just because we don't, that's what, it, what happened. We're just describing what happened. 
Not that we fully understand why it happened. One out of basically a million of these reactions, one out of a million, the photon did not make a matter-antimatter pair. It just made a matter particle. What, it was very... You're, you're trying to find out why. Yeah. And I'm just saying, it is that, okay? <laughs> so, one out of about a million makes a matter particle without the antimatter counterpart. So now the dance card, the dance hall, has 999,000 partners that can pair up. 999, 9, 000, yes. Well, 1,999, yeah. and there's one left over. So everybody else becomes light, and that one has no antimatter particle to mate with. And it is frozen out of the universe and has become all the matter that we know and see today. So everything that we are... It is a is profound pro asymmetry wow. in the early universe. We're the stuff that didn't get a date. Correct. <laughs> Doesn't that strike you as an extremely fragile interpretation of all that there is? I mean, it's like being around by the chi skinny, skinny skin of your chinny, 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 whatever that thing is. Except... In the concept of multiverse, we would have many, many universes. Uh, all the laws of physics don't have to be the same in each universe. So there could be plenty of universes where the dance card was full and it, it's, they just have light in them. And you are not in that universe saying that it was just a chance occurrence. Oh, wow. Well. You are in the universe where it happened. I don't care about happened. the other ones. I'm just interested that our universe, the one that we know and live in, is such a fragile arrangement no, originally. No, it's not. Well, it doesn't have to be. It may be, but it doesn't have to be, yeah. and it is unlikely to be. And can I give an obscure example that will settle this? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Line up a 1,000 people and give them a coin, and everybody said, flip the coin. And about half will get tails, half will get heads. If you got tails, sit down. That's 500 left, approximate. Mm -hmm. Have them flip. Half get heads, have 250 of you sit down. Now we're left with 250. Do it again. Go from 250 to 125 to 60 to 30 to 15 to 8 to 4 to 2 to 1. Okay? in this experiment. It's not, a, it's not an unthinkable experiment. Mm -hmm. This person who survived this exercise flipped heads 10 consecutive times. Now here's what journalists do. They go up to that person and they say, how do you feel? Well, I, I knew I had felt that head's energy halfway through, <laughs> and, I, and I was feeling it, and I... Did they ask anyone else if they felt oh, that head's energy? No, they only interviewed that guy. Okay? You come Wait, on I, I'm not done. Right. Wait, so... <laughs> that person says, boy, I was lucky to flip heads 10 consecutive times. Well... Every time, essentially, every time you do this experiment, somebody's going to flip heads 10 consecutive times. So you want to say, oh, this is a special universe in which that happened. No. No, because of the, the nature of the, the fact that you have a thousand experiments happening all the time, there's going to be one where somebody flips head, heads 10 consecutive times every time you do this experiment. That does not make it special. Just because somebody flips heads ten, 10 consecutive times every time you do the experiment. So, you're in a universe where this weird thing happens at the beginning and you want to feel all, feel all heads energy about it. And I'm saying, <laughs> in a multiverse, there could be 999 universes where that did not happen. And you're in the one that did and you want special credit for it. I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let me move on to another thought. Uh, 